and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can use a linear transform drive to create a push pop button that pushes down and pops instantly back up and a toggle button that goes down once and we press again and it comes back up without using any joints at all. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. As with the previous button scene, we have this scene already set up with the artificial button container, the button boundary walls, and just a simple cube that represents our button. And what we're going to do again is turn our artificial button cube into a controllable by going to Window, Cilia, Interactions, Controllable Creator, and this time we're going to select the linear transform drive, then click Convert, and then close the controllable creator window. Then we just need to select our linear transform drive prefab game object and we just need to update our linear drive facade settings again to the same ones that we did in the previous video with the physics button. So we're going to have a Y axis for our drive axis and we're going to set our drive speed to about 15 and that's the speed our button will move when we press it down and pop back up. We want to start at initial target value of 1 as we want it to start at the top. And we want to always try and get it to move to that top position as well. So we'll have the move to target value set to 1. And then finally, we just need to set our drive limit. So this will be the same as what we did for the physics button. So 0 0.03 sets that up nicely. And then we can align to target value. That will show us at the top position. If we drag it all the way down to 0, that will be at its pressed position. So we'll put it back to 1 for now. Now what we're going to do is add some logic in to make it. So when we touch our button, just collide with it with our interactor. It presses down and then it'll come back up. So we're going to create an empty game object here and I'm just going to call this press down logic. And in here, we're going to add an empty event proxy emitter component that's going to run some logic when we touch this button. So when we touch this button, the logic that we're going to use is we're going to set our target value to zero. So the move to target value will then try and move this drive down to the zero position. And we can do that easily by adding a new listener in here, dragging and dropping our drive, and then pick it on the linear drive facade if we get out to target value and just set that as zero. And then we don't want this to re-trigger when we've pressed it once. So what we're going to do is just turn this game object off for now. So we can't re-trigger this again straight away. So select that game object, set active ball and leave that false. And now all we need to do is on our artificial button, we just need to go down to the interactable facade container. So show interactable facade container and we'll select that. And because this is just an interactable, we can use the first touched event. So when we touch this with our controller, we're just going to trigger that press down logic. So we're going to add a listener to first touched and we're going to grab, drag and drop our press down logic. And then in the empty event proxy meter, we're just going to call receive. And now what we want to do is set the logic if when it gets all the way down to the bottom, we want it to come all the way back to the top again. So let's look in the drive value events in events output and then minimum reached. When that gets to the bottom, all we're going to do is on the activated event, that means when it's reached the minimum, we're just going to set our artificial button's target value back to 1. So select the linear drive facade, then the target value, and set that number to 1. And then finally, when the button has come back to the top, we need to make sure we turn our press down logic on again, so it can be pressed down again once it's reached the top. So in the maximum reached, in the activated, all we need to do is make sure we select our press down logic, and we go to the game object, set active true, so we turn it back on. And there we go, we've set up a simple button now of when we touch that, it will press down and it will pop back up straight for us. So let's look at making a toggle button as well. So if I just take this artificial button container and we move it over to the left a bit and I make a copy of this and drag that to the right and I'm just going to rename this one to artificial button container toggle. So we'll collapse the old one down and we'll expand our new one. And now we're going to set up some different logic. So I'm going to delete the press down logic as we won't be using that. And then we'll go into our linear transform drive of the artificial button and we can expand that and then expand our drive value events and the event outputs and then minimum reached we're not doing this so we're going to delete that maximum reach we're not doing that we'll delete that and then if we go back to the top and show interactable facade container go to the interactable and we also want to delete the first touch as we're going to add a different one in there so with all this open let's start setting up logic for making a toggle button so right at the top in our artificial button container toggle, I'm going to add an empty game object that holds this logic. And I'm going to call this button direction. And this is going to hold the logic of which direction our button should move when we touch it. As when we touch it the first time, we want it to move down. And then when we touch it the second time, we want it to move up. And I'm going to do this using a float event proxy emitter. So let's add a float event proxy emitter component. 
And all we're going to do with this float event proxy emitter is we're going to set this payload to either zero or one. And then we can emit this to determine which direction our button is moving. And to do that, all we need to do is add a listener, grab our drive in there, and then using our linear drive facade in the dynamic float section, one of these is target value. Whatever we set this payload to, that's what it's then going to set our artificial button to move either up or down. And then again, we don't want this to keep re-triggering. So when we trigger it once, we're just going to turn this game object off. So drag the float event proximity game object into another listener. Go to game object, set active and make sure it's unticked. Now the next thing I'm going to do is set up a toggle action. So I'm going to create another empty game object for our toggle action. And I'm just going to call this toggle action. And then in here, we're going to add the toggle action component. And now what we want to do is the first time we press our button, so on the activated, we're going to call our button direction code. So drag and drop button direction into there. And then for the function, we want to select our float event proxy emitter. And we want to call receive, which takes a float. And we want that to receive zero. So when we first touch it, it goes down. And then what we want it to do is stay down. But then when we touch it again, we want it to go back up. So in the deactivated, this will be the second time it's touched. We want to do the same thing again, call button direction, go to float event proxy meter, down to receive float, but this time we want to receive the float of one, which will move our drive value back into that top one position. Now what we want to do is on our interactions interactable, we want to make sure this first touch is set up so it calls our toggle action. So we drag and drop toggle action into there and then go down to the toggle action and all we want to do is call receive bool and we want to make sure it's receiving true. And that will mean the first time we touch it, toggle action will call, it will set the drive to zero, it will move that down. And then the next time we touch it, it will set the drive to one, which will move it back up. Now, if you remember in button direction, we turned it off so we couldn't keep re-triggering it. So we do need to turn that back on. So when it does get to that minimum position, what we want to do is make sure we can turn on button direction so we can make it move back up. When it reaches the minimum position, we'll add an activated in here. And all we need to do is drag and drop button direction Go to game object, set active, make sure that's true. And also when it gets to that maximum position, we want to do the same. So in maximum reached, add in the activated event, grab our button direction and on the function, go to game object, set active, true. And there we go. We've now set up two buttons, one that when we touch it will go down and pop instantly back up. And another one where we first touch it, it'll pop down and stay down. And then when we touch it again, it'll pop back up just like a toggle button. And because both of these are using the transform drive, neither one of them will be affected by physics. So we won't be able to drop objects on it or anything like that, but we also won't be able to accidentally trigger it if we didn't want. So let's jump into the scene and see this working. So we're now in the scene and we can see with our simple press up and down button, if I touch it, the button pops down and pops straight back up. And then we've got our toggle button here and on the first touch, we can see it stays down and then I touch it again and it pops back up. And there we go, we've created a simple push pop button and a toggle button using the linear transform drive. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, please consider becoming a YouTube subscriber. Leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. Consider becoming a VRTK patron and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.